In this YouTube channel battle, we're going to compare the channels for Zoom with GoTo. And you may know GoTo, formerly GoToMeeting or GoToWebinar. They go by GoTo now. And round one, do they actually have YouTube channels? Well, Zoom does have a YouTube channel and GoTo has a YouTube channel. So we're going to give them both 50 points right now because when you have a YouTube channel and you get in the mix and you start working on it, helping the marketing of your company, you've already got a good head start because there are a number of video conferencing platforms that are not actually doing video marketing on YouTube. So 50 points for each to begin round one. Round two, let's look at video cadence and I'm gonna give 150 points potentially to each channel. And let's look at their cadence. So what we do is we go down here and we look exactly how many days ago the videos launched. Now, at the time of this recording, the latest video is 12 days ago. We feel that you should have one to two, maybe three videos per week and should launch them on different days. And why do we say that? There's a programming schedule. And by programming, we don't mean like for developers, we mean like for TV content. So for instance, if you watch a certain type of YouTube channel or a certain type of television channel, the thing is, is that you don't want to watch all their content in one day, do you? You want to watch it over time. Now, someone like Netflix may upload all their videos in one day, but they can feature it on their home page. You don't have the potential traffic that Netflix has unless you decide you're going to run it as a paid ad, which is a whole nother conversation. Let's take a look here. Zoom. They launched this video 12 days ago, 12 days ago, 12 days ago, 12, four videos on the same day, maybe at the same time. Then 13, 13, so 13 days ago. And then this, this previous week, they don't say exactly what day, but it, it was over four videos that week. And then three weeks ago, there was four videos. I'm assuming based on this cadence, that they may be launching these videos all like four different videos all in the same day for the same week. That's a process we do not recommend because the thing is, is that the YouTube system is really not set up to promote four of your videos on the same day. Maybe one. You're lucky if they promote the one. But you know what happens when somebody's homepage gets flooded by a whole bunch of videos? They don't watch them all. They think they're sort, you're sort of spamming them essentially with too much content. You might even get unsubscribes without them even watching your video as if someone's sending you, you know, four emails a day, you're going to say, oh, I got to unsubscribe from this list. So I would say the cadence, not that great. They need to pick their battles and say, we're launching Monday, Thursday, and Friday, or something like that. So on GoTo, again, we're going to click videos in reverse chronological order and take a look at these videos. And what do we find here? We find five days ago, five days ago, five days ago, five, five. So five videos on the same day when they could have launched them over a period of days. Uh, that's not a process that we recommend. And when you sort of clog the clog the tubes, only a few people are going to get to see any of these videos because you're just bombarding them with videos and that when people see your thumbnail and they don't click, that sends a very negative signal that people who are shown your thumbnail don't want to click and they will assume that's true for every other video and they won't show it to everyone. They'll actually show it to fewer people. So this is not what we recommend. Now let's take a look at the previous, then they skipped a week because this is three weeks ago and they launched five videos during that week, I'm going to presume those were also on the same day, sort of like whenever the editor finished them, we were going to upload them. But YouTube really isn't like Dropbox. It's not like Netflix. You really want to have a programming schedule, not like developer programming, but content programming. Just the same as you wouldn't upload all your blog posts the same day for that month. And your YouTube viewers can't handle as many posts as say Instagram or Facebook where you need to post five times a day just to get attention. So for video publishing cadence, uh, we're really only giving Zoom 25 points and GoTo 25 points. And round three, subscribability and call to action. Well, we've got a potential 200 points. Let's see how these guys do. Zoom, 
doesn't say anywhere that you should subscribe or any reason other than I like all kinds of people. Let's look at their first video. Maybe there'll be some information there. Is it clickable? Is it subscribable? We are not going to play the audio for copyright concerns, but it's not engaging. They're telling us that about people. They are not showing me a person talking. They're showing me graphics. I am a Zoom person. I want to learn about Zoom. It's not showing me people. And even the graphics, they're not looking at me. They're not even engaging with me. So they're telling me it's about people, but it's actually what they're showing me is about features, not even so much about benefits. And that is, I think, a mistake. Um, clearly people are interested in some of this thing, but you can see uh, from the rewind way, way down here, this light gray uh, geography here, not a lot of people rewinding. So not that engaging. I looked through this. I could not find a place where they said subscribe. Uh, they sort of presume you're already on Zoom and you're already using it and you're already subscribed, but I think that's a mistake. Now, in the description, now nobody's commented either or asked any questions, and that also means they're not engaging very well. Now they have done a few features here in the description, and they are linking here to this URL, learning.zoom slash course something. So that is really what they're telling you their call to action is. They are saying, learn more about this, subscribe for more. They could have a link. They could have a link in the end screen here to subscribe even off the platform now we don't recommend frequently linking off the platform to your website but they could they're in the partner program they could do that they could link to this url now what else are we finding there's a few other call to actions here but what's why are they not clickable well they're not clickable because they're not using http colon slash slash or https colon slash slash so it's actually they're asking you to go somewhere. It is a call to action, but it doesn't succeed because you can't click on it. You have to copy and paste this. That's bad. So not that, not that great. They should change this on their uh, descriptions throughout the channel. I feel this is, this channel is not that subscribable. They're getting subscribers, but I think the reason they're getting subscribers is people think they should subscribe because they should know how to use Zoom. I have a feeling people are not subscribing in order to come back and watch more videos and engage more with this product on YouTube. Now with GoTo, they're saying discover your GoTo. I don't know what that really means. I don't know if that means I should subscribe. I look through here to see what types of things and would these topics compel me to subscribe doesn't feel like it's about me. It still feels like it's about them. These testimonials, they're looking at me. And so I feel they want to communicate with me. Let's go to the most recent videos and let's just look at them and see what they're doing. Also, I want to note that a lot of these videos that don't have custom thumbnails and even the ones that do, the person is never looking at me. They're looking at the screen. But people who are clicking on things tend to look at other faces that are looking at them. And I noticed that one of these videos way down here says, let's do this. It's even this thumbnail in the middle there. It's covered up a face, but that face is looking at me. And that video got 2,500 views. And this one where they weren't looking at me got 300. And I can tell you with experience that that happens a lot, that the video thumbnails where people are looking at you and have big emotions and big faces do better. Now let's just look at these videos. This is 31 seconds. This is 16 seconds. This is telling me that these are ads. Do ads make me want to subscribe? Very seldom. I'd recommend you don't have ads unless they're unlisted. And also here they have different languages of these different videos. You just don't want to have different languages on your different videos because if I'm trying to decide whether to subscribe or I do subscribe and then I start getting all your videos in Portuguese and German and Spanish and I only speak one language, I'm going to say I don't want to watch this video and not watching your video sends a very negative signal to YouTube. It says people want to watch one of these videos, don't want to watch another, and it shows your future videos to fewer and fewer people the more this happens. Now let's check this individual video that was the most recent one published. 
Now you can read the subtitles because I'm showing the subtitles. In today's world, the key to communication is flexibility with Go to Connect. Your teams can enjoy the same principle. So they said your teams. They acknowledged me at eight seconds into the video that I exist. We recommend saying the word you in the first sentence and having somebody look at you in the first one second of the video. Talk and look at you in the first one second of the video. So it's really not about me. This video is about features. I don't care about features, I care about me, which means I care about benefits. Now I looked through this and I did not see a place to subscribe. They did promote at the very end this URL. Now they're in the partner program. They could have made a link to this URL directly in the video. And they could also put a subscribe button in the video. And they could have said, please subscribe. They did none of these things. And in the description, they had a link. Yay! But it's not clickable because it does not have HTTP colon slash slash in there. And let's face it, this is a weak description. There's not a lot about the company or why this channel is valuable or why the company is valuable. And you're just wasting an opportunity because you have an opportunity here in the description for the small group of people that do click who are really engaged. And what happened? No comments because who wants to engage? You didn't engage with me, the viewer. Why should I engage with you, the brand? So out of a possible 200 points, I'm giving Zoom 35 points and go to 25 points. It was a close contest. Zoom was slightly better. I think with a few tweaks, both these channels can start to do a lot better organically for the videos that they do on their YouTube channels. And check out this next video for more great tips. My name is Dane Golden from the Video Marketing Business Academy, and we're here to help you up your game on YouTube for business and transform your viewers into loyal customers. So check out that next video. You do that and you'll be golden.